Ashley and her guys. This is episode 108, Holiday Knitting Questions. And I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram under both those names. So how's it going with you? Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping. <laughs> oh, I think that's Steve Miller from the 70s. Yeah, I'm throwing it back. But man, I, I, I intend to record and then I don't. And so maybe I just need to try shoot for every Friday. And if I make it every other, that's great. Because right now trying to do midweek is not working out for me. So we are in a different place. Thanks to Kathy who pointed out the light. The lighting was not great um, where I had been recording. So let me know what you think of this. Okay. We can be here from now on if we want. I don't know about the peach. What's it do for my complexion? It's like a yellowy peach color. Anyways, <laughs> we got new windows at the house. Um, yesterday and the day before the carpenters were there putting them in and it's so nice. Our old windows, let me just tell you. I used to have to, so the, the they are, they were, 28 years old and they used to be their sliders so in the bedroom so you grab on like get your fingers in the wood part and then uh, uh, and then they go and that's how both bedroom windows were it's quite annoying so these new ones they put in yesterday and I went up they did they finished yeah they finished them yesterday I went up and I used my pinky and I went there the window how cool is that? I'm so excited. <laughs> but you came here to talk about knitting, not to talk about my new glorious windows. So first up, let's talk about the sweater cow. So we are knitting sweaters for our kids through the end of the month and loosely for our kids, whatever. Knit a kid's sweater, knit for someone else's kid. I'm not fussy, break the rules, just, just join in, knit some sweaters, kid sweaters. So um, we do have a new prize. So. I had mentioned before we had a cat and a half bag from Silver Shed USA, I showed that. And then um, Jennifer Lassonde is offering up her Ayla Grace shawlette, which, or shawl, it's not a shawlette, it's a shawl pattern. And that's beautiful. Maybe we'll have something to show about that. <laughs> and now, oh gosh, I'm not gonna be able to say this right. How about I just put it across the bottle right here. Um, Salvig has offered her pattern too, which is a top-down, um, cardigan children's sweater sized for 2 to 12 years old so great range of sizes so that pattern is called pure Sw spring sweater so that's also available as a prize they keep pouring in they keep pouring in so uh, a question for you guys so I've been knitting you're gonna see sweater for Rove so that's like a how old is he he's three it's like a four-year-old size sweater and then also knitting some newborn sweaters. And it's so much easier to knit newborn sweaters. <laughs> What's your favorite size children's clothing to knit for if you do knit kids' sweaters? I'd like to get some discussion going over on the wrap board um, on, the on the thread for the knit along. So if there's a size you prefer to knit, let me know. I like the small ones because they're simple, but then the older the child is, the more complicated the pattern can be, the more you know it's not gonna get damaged by spit up and whatnot. Um, yeah, so what do you think? What's the best size to knit? <sighs> it's really cold here today. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna reach for my coffee. Of course, there's always coffee. So here's my sweater that I'm working on for the knit along. It is the, let me butcher the name for you, Elizabeth Green Musselman's. It's her pattern. It's the Langstroth. And that's how far I am. I did about one pattern repeat since you saw it last. So not a whole lot of progress. And I have to tell you that it, it looks a little bun bunchy. If I were to stretch it, it could, be, it could show more progress. <laughs> but I know, it doesn't count, right? So it is what it is. Um, I am knitting this with Cascade 220 Heathers, which is not a super wash yarn, in the color 2453 Spice Pumpkin. It is a great, orange color. Roland and I keep talking about his orange sweater that mommy's making him and I really want him to have this for Thanksgiving. So before the end of the month, I'm going to finish mine. Are you going to finish yours? <laughs> <laughs> I am using US size 5, 3.75 millimeter needles and US size 6, 4.0. Not sure which one is actively on my needles right now because it's been a while. Um, I'm knitting the 28 8 inch size one. So I think it's going to be great. It looks big to my eye, but I'm sure it'll fit him just fine. Just 
fine. Oh, and the reason I wrote down my needle sizes is because I'm not using the pattern recommended sizes. That's why. <laughs> so, more to come on this. I have a lot to go if I'm gonna finish this sweater in the next, what's today? Today is the 13th. And I think I have exactly, yes, it's Thursday. I have exactly two weeks. I have to really focus, focus on this. We'll see, we'll see. So that's on the needles, that's going right now. I also cast on another baby sweater, which I'm sort of counting towards this cow. Cast on and finish because it's been so long. So here we go. Mm -hmm. I realized I have three pregnant friends and two of the three are having girls. So I wanna do some girl knitting. And of course there's so many cute frilly girl sweater patterns out there, but I also need to be mindful of how much brain power I have to knit these days, which is not a lot because still Tristan is 3.30 or 4.30 up every night. I wish she would stop that. And Rose's been having like night terrors or nightmares, something. Like he's waking up screaming. And we're having a really hard time calming him down. So that hasn't been fun lately. But um, so picking out a sweater pattern, I want to do something that's useful. I want to do something that's cute and something that my brain can knit. So those are like three requirements. And I know from my experience with Tristan that the toddler t-shirt vest, yeah, t-shirt vest by Sam Lamb is a perfect pattern. So I knit one, another one. This is my fifth one. I know, that's crazy. I really like this pattern and Tristan wears his all the time and it keeps him toasty warm. So this is some Into the World because I had some, I, I mentioned it, Into the World guilt. So you're gonna see some more Into the World. But this is two strands held double of the Chula sock. I know I said it. The Chula sock in the June 2013 Club Color End of Innocence. And this is one of those, which I, you lose the effect in the fact that I held it double, but the yarn itself was a two ply uh, super wash and one ply knot. So it uh, took the, the dye very differently and all, and the yarn itself, itself looks very barber pulled here. Here's one piece of it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but anyways. Um, it's a beautiful yarn. It was great to work with. It's a little scratchier than I would like, but that's okay. Um, and I knit this on US size zeros. So, and it took, I have 15 grams left. So it took 85 grams. I can't do that math in my head. I want to say like 360, 380 yards to complete this sweater. And I knit it in like a week. So it, that's because I was held double. It would have been like 170 of a single skein. So it's a great pattern. Um, it's the finished result that I come up with using double sock yarn on size sevens is about a 12 month size chest. So, but obviously they can wear it earlier. And I did make a modification. This is a free pattern. Um, this time, instead of casting, it calls for 52 stitches on the armhole. I picked up the 52 and then immediately dropped it down to 48, just, you know, evenly spaced decreases just so it wouldn't flare as much. And I'm hoping with blocking, I can cinch it in a little more because Tristan's do kind of look like, a little bit like wings. <laughs> so, but I'm fine with that. And I love it. I think it came out beautifully. So uh, that's one bit. So there's gonna be more baby knitting on the needles in the coming weeks because one is due in November, one is due in December, and one is due in January. And the December one could go any minute. And the, no, yes. The November one could go any minute. The December one could go earlier. The January one, January one I hope we're okay. So, baby knitting on the horizon. So we're going to change the scenario again. <laughs> it's just not my day. Okay, so I was showing you the baby sweaters. And I also have um, a second one. So this is the same toddler t-shirt vest. And I used some Opal Sweet and Spicy too. I haven't even entered it into my stash yet. Uh, I just got it and I was so excited at the thought of using a self-striping yarn to do a, you know, seamless baby sweater. So I'm holding the yarn doubled, right? US size sevens, 4.5 millimeter needles. And since it's a top down, this is a free pattern, top down, um, raglan increased sweater, obviously the circumference is getting wider and wider. And I didn't want to lose 
I didn't want it to look variegated rather than striped because the circumference was so large compared to the circumference of a pair of socks. So I started a second strand holding the yarn doubled. So there's a lot of color management going on with this sweater, but I love how it's turning out so far. And as soon as I finish with this, so this is a color repeat wrapped off uh, two strands of it. As soon as this is done, then I'll just let it do a single strand and the striping, whatever that will be for probably the bottom third of the sweater. But I think it's turning out really nice and I really like it. I'm so excited about this one. So, and it is a little bit softer than the Into the World. So, oh, and the color name is, in case you too would like to knit with this yarn, is Rot Cold. So, I need to go see what the translation is there. It's probably some kind of candy, right? Sugar candy, cotton candy, I don't know. That's what it makes me think of. So those are the kids' sweaters. If you want to get in on the knit along, go over to the Ravelry group and show some pictures of what you're knitting. And you could get one of those three great prizes. And we are going to run that knit along until November 30th. And then we're going to start a different knit along. <laughs> and that knit along is going to be for the Aelia, Aelia Grace shawl. So I talked about it last week. I showed you my Into the World on the Rocks colorway in the Meridian sock, which is an 801010 mm -hmm. Merino Cashmere Nylon. You're seeing where this is going, right? Into this bag right here. Yeah, I couldn't resist. It was Halloween. I had a couple hours, and so I cast on. And I've been knitting. And so I have to say, this pattern is very interesting. Rather than charting the stitch pattern or writing it out verbally, it's just put it in tables which I have maybe when I first started knitting, I did one pattern like that. It's a fairly new concept to me. Um, and at first I was really hesitant. I was like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And probably by row four of the pattern, I was like, this is awesome. Every pattern should be written like this. So Jennifer, I really like the way you wrote this pattern. So here you go. This is gonna be some Christmas knitting for one of my, my co-workers. Um, so that's, as much as I have so far. I am through section five. I think there are eight sections and I really love it. It's not too complicated that I can't, that it's, it's not super challenging for my brain, <laughs> basically. But I haven't knit a shawl in forever. I really love it. I may, I had a tiny error on the center increases and of course being me, I can't leave it. So I ended up spending like half an hour dropping down, fixing it, fixing all its friends, but it looks good now. I love it. I love this shawl. I think it's going to be beautiful and it'll go really great with a lot of things. So, um, what else to tell you about it? I didn't write anything else about it. Oh, 83% of those who voted, voted for doing a knit along starting December 1st. So I'm going to finish this one and do a second one with y'all in the knit along and it's going to be great. I have a pulled, pulled loop there. There we go. Back into Yay! Thank you so much, Jennifer, for um, sharing this pattern with us. I really, really like it. So that's going on. <laughs> Just looking at this mountain of things. That's the other reason not to go too long because you forget to, to talk about things, to show things. So did I update about this, that, or the other? <gasps> I finished another pair of socks. Woo! <laughs> So these are the short socks for Kim, one of Tristan's teachers. Did I weave in my hands? I did, I've washed them. Um, they really don't fit on these sock blockers because their feet are small. I figured when I take them off the blockers, they'll cinch back into place. That's fine. Love it, love it, love it. I, um, again, because I like to do color management apparently on my self-striping socks or on anything. So these are toe up, simple, no. Slip Stitch Heel Basic Sock by Wendy D. Johnson is the um, heel I always use. And I did a two by two rib and I did not change my yarn for, no I did, I can't remember. I didn't change for the gusset increases, I just added in some more orange. And so then I continued on because the light blue is the next color and then the uh, royal blue right here. And then I wanted to make sure that the front of the stock, sock stayed the same. So then I just broke off and picked up again with the light blue. So it's a, a, it's a bit blue heavy here on both of them, but 
She's a non-knitter. She's not going to mind. And I did make sure both of them, it's hard to see because of the red blocker, sorry. I made sure both of them ended with pink because I wanted to give her some pink on the cuff. So, I think they look great. And this is Barocco Sock in Country Roads. Knit on US size zero, 2.25 millimeter needles. And I used my Novas, I think is what they are. Knitter's Pride Novas. The solid aluminum or whatever it is. I really like those needles. I need to get some more. Those were the winners out of my three from Stitches. And what else do I have to show you? So I, hang on, I gotta do some, do some tiny. What do I what I've already talked about, right? So I cast on and finished, of course. <laughs> a hat for Tristan. So this is the monster face hat by Rebecca Danger. I had an urge to knit it on a Sunday afternoon. I ran out. It was November 2nd. We made apple pie that morning as like our activity because it was a rainy, dreary day. And Steve was like, let's make apple pie. Ro was so cute baking. He was so excited. That's the first time I think he's really gotten involved. So he mixed all the sugar and cinnamon and he watched it turn brown, which he thought was exciting. it over the apples and he mixed the apples and, oh so cute he didn't think it smelled good though i don't know <laughs> we kept smelling it Does it smell good no no <laughs> it was funny but anyway so after we did that and then the boys took their nap and i looked at steve and i was like tristan needs more hats that that baby just needs more hats so i wanted to knit this and i ran to the lys because i didn't have any stash yarn and acceptable colors and content and got some Barocco vintage and I also have not entered this in my stash. I don't know the colors <laughs> but it's a teal a white and a green <laughs> I knit this with size sevens again because those are apparently my favorite on 4.5 millimeter needles and it took like two evenings it was a really quick knit I just got the eyes from 6060 the Etsy shop um, they just came in and I slapped them right on there. The inside though, they're safety eyes. That, I'm not a fan of that. Do you see how much those stick out? Yeah. So I think I'm gonna just knit some, some sort of cushioning and put it over on the inside. You know, like a couple layers, like a four by four square and then fold it and put it over. I don't know, however much thickness I need to get so that doesn't poke into T's head. But and he's got his little tooth. I did add the ears from one of the other monster patterns just because I thought ears would make it just a bit more cute. So that was fun on and off. And then I was gonna knit a tissue box. And that same day I had this urge to also knit tissue box covers and I got distracted thankfully. So that's not going on, but it almost did. <laughs> um, and then lastly, okay. So I finished the socks for Kim. I had to cast on another pair. And these, if we had talked like three days ago, you would have seen hardly any progress. It would have been like little toe nubbins. But because yesterday, no, the day, uh, yesterday I was home with the carpenters for a bit and the day before was Veterans Day. And so daycare was closed. So we were all home together and I actually did quite a bit of knitting during naps and whatnot. So here they are. Look at this. This is crazy how much progress I have made. So these are for uh, someone with very large feet, bigger than my size 11 feet. And it's a woman. So uh, I did cast on 68 stitches instead of my normal 64, hoping that'll make them wide enough. And this is again, some more of that opal yarn that I did not enter in my, can you tell that really bothers me about entering it in my stash? It really does. These are cake pops is what the color name is. And, the, and it's written in English on this one for some reason. But this is uh, sweet and spicy too. Also, I thought it was just regular, but they both stay squared. So double sweet and spicy. Isn't that cool? pretty my favorite part of this yarn oh boy <laughs> Ooh, let me get this all tangled up okay my favorite part of this yarn is well see teal is my favorite color so you would expect that and that was probably what drew me to it but i really love those pink sections i just can't wait i'm like oh let me hurry up and get to a pink oh let me end on a pink so <laughs> i've been flying to get to the pink part but don't you love the fake aisle section too. I know. This is a really good colorway. And of course it's opal, so I love it. I absolutely love it. And this is my new bag. Mm -hmm. Have you seen these? I'm not telling you. No, I'm going to tell you. Uh, this is, do I have a business card in here? I don't think I do. So for you. 
S E W four F O R E W E for you. And I think she this is a great bag size. Which makes really me good think construction. Of telling you about my 2014 intentions. <laughs> I hope you guys like hearing about them. Sometimes I feel like I'm just reciting off what I've done and I don't know. I thought it's good. You don't accomplish goals unless you measure them and you evaluate against them, right? And so. My first one was knit with all the Rhinebeck yarn. So while I did finish my Denver cowl since the last time we talked, um, that didn't really change my numbers. So I have knit with eight out of the 14 skeins I purchased. I don't think that's gonna change. And really my motivation was going to Rhinebeck and it didn't get to happen. So nothing there <laughs> or no progress to report. So knit 14 pairs of socks. I, after finishing Kim's socks and Randy's socks, am at a whopping 12 pairs for the year. And in case you didn't notice, these are flying along. And I have the, I don't think I'm gonna work on them though, the navy blue and neon yellow pair because, for my dad, because I was stash diving and found some really great uh, yellow solid sock yarn that I had actually purchased for knitting him socks probably five or six years ago. But, um, like a great canary yellow yard. So that's really what I want to be giving him next for his yellow socks. So I don't know if I'll finish those, if they'll go to Steve or what. Um, but I have these on the needles and they're flying along and they're not going to be long legs. And then I'll get my 14th pair on the needle and get them off. So I'm excited. That one's going to be, it's going to come close. Going to come close to completing that one. Uh, five pairs of slippers. Still holding at one, that's no, not gonna happen. <laughs> um, socks for five worthy recipients. So here's the disclaimer. I have knit five pairs of socks for people, but they're not the five people that I intended to. So um, I'm calling that good, <laughs> close enough. I'm calling that completed because, you know, the intention there was to be more generous in my sock knitting, that my sock drawer is overwhelmed and I love to knit socks, but I wanted to um, make sure I was giving some away. So check down on that one. Um, two sweaters for Ro, for Tristan, and two for me. So Tristan has three sweaters. <laughs> Ro has one, and there's a second one on the needles for him. I'm not gonna knit any sweaters for me. <laughs> it's not gonna happen this year, which is, I mean, maybe I should change that because I think every year that I've been a knitter, I've knit a sweater, at least one sweater for myself. So maybe I should, ah, I just don't feel it. And all the ones that I have that are 30, 40% finished, I don't even feel like finishing those. So more to come. <laughs> maybe that'll be my only goal for next year, knit yourself two sweaters. So we'll see. And then lastly, knit more hats. So in 2013, I knit eight hats and this year, I knit. In addition to what I had already done, I did the three garter ear flap hats, right? So the courtly frogs and the broco vintage and the one that was too big and the one that was too small and the one that was just right. So those three hats, I did a day of community service with work in which I spent the day with a bunch of knitters. Well, they weren't all knitters, but crafty people. And I knit um, two baby hats for charity. So there's two more hats. And then the monster tea hat. So that's six more hats. That puts my total at 17 hats for the year. That's crazy. That's a lot of hats. And then lastly, <laughs> what I really want to discuss with you guys and get your thoughts and I don't know, kind of gather my thoughts together and mull it around holiday knitting. So it's mid November. Everyone is probably, if not, they should be in full swing for whatever holiday knitting they're going to do. And I have some people I have nine people on my list that I would like to knit for. And I, I'm, I'm kind of questioning knitting for those people. So, you know, you have different personalities of all the people you know, and different levels of interaction with your knitting and interest in your knitting. So 
like uh, these socks are for someone that she's not a knitter she didn't ask for anything hand knit but she does crafts herself and herself she different crafty projects and so I'm 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 nervous about these right that my labors will not be appreciated but at the same time it's like well she's a crafty person so hopefully she will um, enjoy them appreciate what I did the amount of time and energy and love I put into these but I don't know if she will or not so there's a risk there right and at the same time I knit a pair earlier this year the orange pair uh, for Steve's Aunt Laura who every time I see her wants to know about my knitting wants to know what I've bought for yarn where I've gone what I've done she doesn't knit. she's also another crafty person but she's not a knitter now I didn't hesitate in the slightest to knit for her because she showed so much interest in my knitting in the past so I know that those will be well received and loved but then uh, another case another person that I'm thinking about I've knit for and she was extremely appreciative. Now she wore the hand, the fingerless mitts I knit for her last year, almost every day, at least two or three times a week. She's one of my, she's my boss. Um, love them, love them to death, but, <laughs> right? So obviously she's very appreciative and enjoyed my, the lab, fruits of my labor. But at the same time, she trashed them. Like they are so ratty looking and destroyed and they're not even a year old, right? And obviously you don't wear them for the six months in the summer. And she brought them back out this year and I just cringe looking at them. I'm like, don't tell people I made those for you. They look so bad. <laughs> so do I knit her another, another pair, more knitwear for Christmas? Or do I be smarter about it? Like I use Baroque Vintage. That should be a high wearing yarn. I don't <laughs> but is it just about the wear and tear that most things don't see most of our knitwear doesn't see that much friction and use so I think I'll knit for her again but I also know that whatever I knit for her is likely going to be dam loved <laughs> but damaged so it's just it's these interesting traits you know interesting things to think about you know another recipient I've knit her four pairs of socks okay and she only wears one of those pairs of socks I have never seen her wear the other three. So do I knit her more socks? I don't It seems like a waste of my time, right? But I also have to talk to her because is she just wearing that one pair because they fit the best? They're the most comfortable? They're her favorites? I don't know. So I think I'll knit her. I'm not gonna knit her another pair of socks and I will definitely knit her other items, but uh, it's just interesting to see that over time how people receive and use my hand knits another friend i've knit her a couple pairs of socks and she's never worn them so not gonna knit for that one you know, you know those types of things um roland's teachers so i know that all the teachers are friends down there at the daycare and um odds are that the tristans too that get hand knit socks will be showing them or talking about them to the others so i think for roland's teachers i just need to knit something um it's awful. I want to make them something, but not as nice as what I make for Tristan's. And here's the rationale for that. Tristan's ratio is one to four. Those teachers are spending a lot more time and energy on Tristan than Roland's teachers, which I think is one to eight. It's, mu it's a much higher ratio. And I, I don't have the same connection with them. I don't sit and visit with them for half an hour a day, give or take. <laughs> you know so I feel like I did fingering away socks because they wear socks for Tristan's teachers and for Roland's teachers you know they stand around on a playground several times a day so maybe I'll go the hat or the fingerless mitts route I did fingerless mitts for the teachers last year he had different te Roland's teachers last year and the year before I really like fingerless mitts for some reason <laughs> but um so we'll see probably you'll see those on the ne needles coming soon because I can't not do it and then um, some of my other co-workers so I'm on a team of there are four of us and I'm obviously gonna knit for my boss I knit for her last year last year there were just the two of us so it was a no-brainer I have to figure out what to do for the others and, and yeah I don't I don't I don't know <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they get ornaments. <laughs> we'll see. We'll do something. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, holiday knitting. Who's knit worthy in your book? Who are you going to knit for? Who's coming off your list? 
because you know every year when I do my Christmas cards I have a list in Excel and I go through and it's like okay these couple people are coming off I haven't received from them in a few years and these people are gonna add them so I feel like my knitting list of who's knit worthy who's gonna get a Christmas gift hand knit Christmas gift changes every every year and it should it should evolve as we as knitters evolve, so should our gift recipients. <laughs> so that, I think, is all I have to say. What a long-winded show. We can't go this long without talking. I haven't even told you anything about the boys. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I had to tell you something, right? How about about Tristan? So I know I, um, one of these days, <laughs> one of these days at some point, I'll just let, I'll let Tristan tell you about what Tristan's doing. Tristan. Hi, how's it going? How's it going, big guy? Look at you. Look at you, so strong and handsome. <gasps> what do you have to say for yourself? Can you correct or are you going to fall over? Oh, get that foot. What's up on the bottom of your foot? I think that's all for me from here in New Hampshire. I hope you are enjoying what's going on in your knitting, not getting too stressed out about Christmas knitting. And I will see you in about 10 days or so. Until then, enjoy.